Okay, get excited. We're on to our fifth and final thigh exercise. We've done dumbbell squats, we've done leg extensions, we've done leg curls, we've done the hip adduction, the inner thighs. This one surpasses all of them. It's a finishing move. It's called a frog squat, but it really puts basically the best of both worlds together. It does a leg extension and a squat at one time with no equipment, no machine. This is great to do if you're on the road, if you're in a hotel. It's kind of an isolation compound movement. Uh, it's almost like a squat, but you're using only the knee joint instead of the knee and the hip joint. It's very difficult. There's actually three different positions I can put you in to make it a little bit easier. It's very safe on the knee, believe it or not. It kind of looks awkward, but it's safe on the knee joint. Um, if you do have any knee pain or have any knee problems, you may want to avoid this one, but you can also do this isometrically. You can kind of lock yourself into different positions uh, and not go through any kind of movement. You can stay in fixed positions without injuring the knee. And even the isometric contraction, just holding it uh, statically, is still a, a big demand on the quadricep muscles. So anyway, let's go on to the first position, the easiest one. I'll meet you when I get there. Going down. Okay, I'm here. I made it. Not for long though. I, uh, I'm in the frog squat position. My forms are resting on my thighs, taking off part of my upper body weight, and my weight is through my heels. One thing before you go any further, don't try this until you watch the entire clip. Learn all the ins and outs of this exercise. Make sure you know how to get out of it especially before doing this. You definitely don't want to twist or, or tweak your knee at all. So forearms on my thighs, my hands in the praying position because I'm going to need it, and you're going to lift your hips up and lower your hips back down. This is actually quite safe on the knee if you do it slowly and correctly. And you're gonna get down this low position, maybe looking in a mirror in front of you. You're trying to keep your head like it's in a vice. So my eyes, if I were in front of a mirror, should be lined up on my eyes the entire movement. And this is an easy way to do this. I'm supporting a lot of my body weight. To make it a little bit harder, I can take my hands off my thighs, place them on the ground in front of me, and continue the movement. So your hands are still giving you a little help, but not that much. And by keeping your hands down, it also helps keep your head down throughout the entire exercise. Just so you can focus on lowering and raising your hips. It really is the best transition to the next and the most difficult position. Now watch the arms. Aha, the true frog squat. Your arms aren't helping out at all and all of your body weight is now supported by your legs in a very biomechanically inefficient position. These are a lot tougher than they look. Now if you have any physical limitations that may limit your range of motion, you may want to do just that. Limit your range of motion. Definitely don't go down too low. And you may want to do this over a bench or a low chair initially just for reassurance. Or you can always resort to putting your forearms back in your thighs. Again, watch the arms. Now this modified version of a frog squat is definitely a lot easier and it's also the best way to exit the exercise. Whatever you do, never, never stop the exercise in the down position. Trust me, you'll be tempted to drop to the ground, but don't do it. Your knees aren't going to like it. So key points, keep the weight, your weight, through your heels, not through your toes. Also, use your head as the axis of rotation. Keeping it in one position as best you can. You don't want to lift up your whole body up and down like you would with a regular squat. And also keep your range of motion limited. You don't want to over compress your knee. Definitely don't bounce at the bottom. But also you don't want to go up too high at the top of the range of motion. I like to limit it to where my back is about parallel with the ground. And also if you do have any kind of knee issues, you could just hold it in one isometric position uh, with no motion whatsoever. So from the top, put your feet a little more than shoulder width apart and your toes should be pointed out slightly. Actually, the direction of your knees where they bend should line up with the direction of your toes where they point. You should be able to draw a straight line between your hip, your knee, and your toe. They should all face the same direction. Keep your weight through your heels, lower your hips down to a safe position, and then lift your hips up until your back is parallel or just slightly above parallel with the ground. Remember to keep your head down as much as possible throughout the entire movement. And that's it. Just keep going until you can't do anymore. And stop. Now don't think I've been doing these the whole time. This is a tough exercise. And when you get out of this, don't drop down to the ground. Don't twist and tweak your knee. You want to put your forearms back on your thighs. Maybe put your hands on your knees. Support your body weight a little bit. But whatever you do, don't stand up straight yet. Keep your head down a little bit lower. You may actually want to kneel down or sit in a chair or something next to you. Take a breather. You know, what happens when you're doing any kind of lower body movement or any kind of exercise in general? You're dilating blood vessels in that area. But when you dilate blood vessels in the lower body, like doing a, a big muscle exercise like frog squats, uh, as soon as you stop, the blood wants to rush into that area to help clear out some of the waste products you've created. Now, if you stand up straight, the blood sinks because of gravity. It goes down to those open blood vessels and you get dizzy. You get something called orthostatic hypotension. It's hypotension. You're actually lowering your blood pressure um, and it's a protective me mechanism. You're actually, your body's trying to go horizontal to get blood to the brain, but it's not, it's not very safe. So uh, always get up in segments. If you do lower body movements and you're working big muscles, especially when you first start off an exercise program and your blood volume hasn't raised up sufficiently, 
just kind of get up in segments. Do lower body, then kneel, then sit, and then stand and, and move on. Don't just stand up, lock out your legs, and let everything sink. Uh, it's not, not the safest way to go. Anyway, that's it for frog squats. We're on to our next exercise for lower body, our last one, and that is the calf raise.